folks, I'm Tom Vassell, Jason Levine. When I first got into the modern game scene, which was around 2000, 2001, this was one of the hottest games out, Web of Power. Yeah. And I was like, that, the box doesn't look that interesting. <laughs> it shows two puppets fighting. <laughs> um, but I played it and I was like, oh, that's, this is a very intriguing game. And then a few years later, I'd say maybe it was three or four years later, they came out with a sequel, which was essentially the same game called China. China. Um, so if you have ever seen a game called China, It and Web of Power, if you like one, you'll like the other. If you don't like one, you won't like the other. They're almost the same game. They're just different maps and a few minor rules. How does Web of Power play? Let's take a look back and see. The game is broken up into different countries, and each country is a color. Some countries are paired. You can see you know, these two countries are paired, while Germany is just one color. But these, you know, there's two orange countries, two red countries, two greens, two yellow, and one purple. And there is a deck of cards that matches these different pairs of colors. So you can see if I play this card, I can play it either in up here, or I can play it down in Spain, depending on what I want. Each player is going to start with some cards, three cards, and there's going to be two cards face up here. Each player is also going to have a whole pile of to tokens. They have little houses, which stand for cloisters, and then they have uh, these tokens here, which stand for advisors, round tokens. And they're limited by the number of tokens that they have. I don't think you'll run out of cloisters on your turn. Now, what you're going to do on your turn is you can either discard a card from your hand and draw a new one, either from here, from the top of the deck, or more likely, you can play cards to put uh, cloisters and advisors out in regions. Now, first, cloisters. When you put a cloister out in a region, there's different spots for them all over the board. You can see them printed on the board. When you place a cloister in a spot, you need to play a card of that color, or you need to play two cards of the same color. You are allowed to put out one cloister in a country if you're the first person to put one. Once there's one in there, you can place up to two there. You are allowed to, at most on your turn, play three cards, but you can only put out two cloisters. So basically, if I played two wild greens and a yellow, I could place those two there, for example. And this is just going to continue to happen. You can also place advisors out. Advisors go on the seal in the different countries. When you place advisors, you are limited... The number of advisors in a region is limited to whoever has the most, whichever color is the biggest majority. So here, for example, purple has two. There can only be two advisors here. If purple built a third cloister there, then another advisor could show up. Now, when the deck is run out here, at that point, intermediate scoring happens. And that's going to be cloisters only. Each country, players are going to score for the different cloisters in that country. If you have the most cloisters, you're going to get one point for every cloister there. So this monastery, if I, purple has three monastery cloisters, so they're going to get, there's one, two, three, four, five total in this country. So purple would score five points. And then the second highest is going to get points equal to the person who has the most. If there's a tie, ties are friendly. So green and yellow here would each score three points. So that's intermediate scoring. At the end of the game, players are going to do that again. The end of the game comes when you run through the deck a second time. At that point, you're going to score the cloisters the exact same way, but you're also going to have some other bonus things. You'll notice there's little roads connecting things. If you have four or more cloisters in a chain, then you will score one point for every cloister in that chain. So here, green, we get one, two, three, four, five points for that chain. You're also going to score for advisors. You'll notice on the board there are numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. And each of these numbers is an alliance between two countries. So here we have an alliance between number two is England and Germany. And in that case, you want to have the majority of cloisters in those two countries. If that is the case, you're going to get one point for every advisor that is in those countries. There is no second place points. So you'll get the points for those advisors, you get the points for chains of cloisters, and you'll get that cloister scoring, which I explained earlier. That is added together. Players have a score track. You'll notice there's no numbers on it. Back when this game came out, that was considered cool, I think. 
whatever. Anyway, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Now, Whip of Power plays three to five players, but it says on the box here, very good for three players. That is so true. Yes. If, if you're talking about three player games, this is probably in the top 20 ever made. Yes. You think? Yes, I think it's great for three. I think it's great for five also. I think it's great in all the numbers. Three, uh, four, and yeah, five. I like five and four, but I'm telling you, there's not many games that play three player area control well. This is one of them. Oh, this is, yeah, it's great. It's great for any number, but three, it does work very, very well in. And I think that's an advantage for this game. Now, it's really intriguing because this game uses a lot of mechanisms you've seen before. You need a specific card to play somewhere. You can use multiple cards as a wild, but you're playing slowly, and you gotta, you got to like try to outthink the other people because if I see Jason build three somewhere, I'm like, oh, he's going for that chain of four. I'm going to block him on this end. Yeah. But if I block him on that end, I might be helping him because he might not get his chain of four, but if he has three cloisters in that country and I put a fourth one in that country to stop him, I just gave him another point. Yep. And also, if you control a country like, aha, I got all the cloisters in a country, that's, that's worth nothing. Yeah. Because there's no second amount of cloisters there. Yeah, like in uh, France, or Frank Reich, as they call it in the game, if you, there's eight. So if Tom puts seven and I just put one, he's going to get eight points for, for every single cloister. I'm going to get seven because my one scores all of his. Right, and you can really help out that second place person that way. And so you have to be very cautious that you're not playing into the other person's hand. And the advisors, at first, since they don't score during the game, you're like, ah, oh, these guys don't seem like you're that big of a deal. They're huge. But if you don't watch what you're doing, one person can get a lot of points from advisors. Like, oh, yeah, I'll take 10 points there. You're like, what? Why? Well, there's five advisors in each of these countries. And they connect, and you get the connecting bonus and that, everything. That's a big deal. This game is not complex at all. It's basically scoring points in three different ways. Yes. And it's just a mesh. It's a web of power. Now, the theme is kind of there. It's like an abstract game, mostly. But it plays well. It plays very well. And it's... He... I mean, I can't think. You know, we're, we um, talked about Elfin Roads a while ago. And comparing this to that, the card mechanism is slightly different, but... This was one of the first games that had a card mechanism where you're drafting cards from either an open pile or a what we call the mystery meat pile into your hand where then you're going to use those cards to play them back out and do things. And this was one of the very first games that did that and it does it well. And I always like taking from the blind pile because then your opponents don't know what card drafts so they don't know where you're going. But this is where my butt comes in. I think Web of Power was a great game in the year 2000. It is still a very solid game. However, there are a lot of other games that have been released since that have a similar feel. There's yes. a lot of area control games, most notably El Grande. Well, that came out in 1995, but earlier, but I mean, to me, but there was a lot of different area control games that came out, uh, Turn in Taxis, Ticket to Ride. They took the ideas from Web of Power. Yes. Right? And so... I almost never play this game now, even though I think it's a very good game. I think it's kind of faded a bit, not because it's a bad game, but because it was almost like a stepping stone to better games. Yes, yes, because you can see direct correlations to games like Ticket to Ride and other games of that sort that use the same drafting mechanism. And you can see, but Web of Power was like the granddaddy of the games, and you can never go wrong with it. I mean, another game that's coming out soon, the Dice Tower Central one, um, Royals. Royals. Oh, yeah. Royals definitely owes Royals. to Web of Power. Yes. And there's a whole line of games that owe to this. And, you know, Michael Schacht comes up with all these great mechanics. And I think he's the one who came up with that mechanic. I'm not sure if him or Alan Moon came up with the mechanic. We'll have to... If you guys are watching... Well, if you ask Alan, he's going to tell you it was him. Write in the comments and <laughs> let us know who you think is the one who came up with that mechanic, the card drafting mechanic, because it's such a great mechanic. And in this game, it works very well. And everything about it, the chaining, the if I build another cloister, that means someone else is going to put the advisor. So you, you want to try to play a bunch of cards from the same, so you can put a cloister and an advisor at the same time. So you aren't, you know, so that way you could build up both and you're kind of building a city. But if you do that, you need to build another city. And there's different amount of cards for each city. So France has more cards than some of the smaller cities, um, some of the smaller areas. It's very, very, very well done. Very balanced game. What's your uh, rating? Awesome. Awesome. Rating. rating of eight. Now this is where I'm gonna sound bad. I'm saying I'll say six. I like the game. 
it just doesn't have as much appeal to me because uh, I thought other games have kind of surpassed it. But I will attaboy it because thank you, Web of Power and Michael Schacht, who's a great designer. That's Web of Power or China. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.